First, let's pay homage to the lineage gurus, homage to the venerable Mang Ming, homage to Master Sakyatun Kong, homage to His Holiness the Sixteen Kamapa, and homage to Master Dubdan Dorji, homage to the three jewels of the altar. Homage to the main deity of the group practice tonight. From the Eastern Lapis Lazuli realm, the medicine Tathagata. Sumo, Tanzan Gatso, Tutan City, all Dhamma masters, Dhamma educators, Dhamma teachers, Dhamma lecturers, Dhamma assistants. Directors of temples and chapters, and all disciples present here and over the internet. Good evening, everyone. How do you do? Uh, these are greetings in all different languages. Hola, amigo. Que quiero mucho. Goin, Ijiba, Kimoji, Jumi, Yapi, Wooden Brain, Kong Bangwa. Na Gang Gang Woman can as a uh, just now, we watched the animation produced by D.B. Boye, the Tripura Prashnya Treasury. And we found that there are many temptations in this world. And the greatest temptation is the temptation of money. And also the temptation of uh, beauties or the temptation of power and status, and the rest, all different kinds of other temptations. So that people forgot their their basic to get rid of these temptations according to the Vajra Sutra. It's what is mentioned is the mind of the past is unattainable, the mind of the present is unattainable. And the mind of the future is also unattainable. Why do we say that? Because the past has passed. It's, you don't have it anymore. And what you have now will also become the past. Because what you have today, whatever you have in this time period, would become the past by tomorrow. And the future is not here yet. So according to what is stated in the Vajra Sutra, there is not a single being that can attain or can obtain or get anything. That's the, the truth. 
truth that in the mind of the past is unattainable, the mind of the past is unattainable, in the mind of the future is unattainable, means that everything is unattainable. And in the Heart Sutra too, that because it is unattainable, a bodhisattva, you cannot, you cannot obtain anything from the Saha world. So think about it. We all know, but we cannot do it. We cannot apply it. We know that it is unattainable, but you still want to own it. So the so the color chakra, the wheel of time, would destroy everything. At the end, everything is destroyed. That's the essential meaning of the color chakra, which is the wheel of time. What does color chakra mean is when the wheel of time turns, it will destroy everything. So nothing belongs to you. Everything is completely annihilated. annihilated. So that's my revelation by watching the animation. And we all now have also seen the supplication for the Buddha to stay in the Saha world. And they are very sincere and respectful and I felt touched to what Graham Golden Mother said was is always accurate on this Dharma throne I often mention that she said personally to me that you can come back at 66 so I thought at that time that at 66 I would go back to the heaven, heavenly realms. But it turned out that when I was 66, some events occurred and then I went back to Taiwan exactly at 66. I went back to Taiwan at 66 and spent 10 years, the period of 10 years in Taiwan. And so that uh, the Taiwan Lezang Temple can be, uh, the development can be completed. And recently one day, Golden Mother also told me that at 79, you can come back. So, I always use Taiwanese calendar. So, when I do the Tai Sui, I always use Taiwanese calendar. So, I'm 78. And next year would be 79. So where will I go back to? Taiwan. Uh, what Golden Mother prophecy is always accurate. I have mentioned about 66 for many, many times, like going back at 66. And now she told me going back at 79. So I'm thinking that this time it should be going back to the heavenly realms. So that's what I think. 
and my Yidams, Golden Mother, Amitabha Buddha, and Siddhikarpa Bodhisattva. And Amitabha Buddha is also the longevity Buddha. And he did say that he would help me to extend my lifespan. According to my health and my health condition is that I love to sleep uh, to be seated here on this Dharma throne, I would enter into meditation and samadhi, and from time to time I would fall into zi or sleep. But the good thing is, when I open my eyes, I would know what I would need to do next, which is the overall matter of dedication. So, I would open my eye at the time of the overall matter of dedication, just in time for it. But generally speaking, all my internal organs are still healthy and well. My blood pressure typically is around 130s, about 135 this past few days. So it's still fine. And my blood sugar on average for last month, it's below seven. That's still fine too. Uh, generally speaking, uh, I put great importance on exercise. And a while back, I had some problem with a disc, with the spine disc, so I have been practicing yoga every day. I would use a yoga mat and yoga pillow, and I would practice the yoga lying down. And it seems fine yeah, now. It seems okay. Uh, so the condition now seems okay. However, what Golden Mother said is always very responsive and accurate. Of course, what Amitabha Buddha said is also very uh, responsive and accurate, effective. Of course, they are not two people. One is the king of Buddhas, the other one is the king of all sages. And as for myself, I just go with the flow, with the natural way. Life and death are the same for me. I am most sympathetic or empathetic toward the elderly. My own wish is to uh, establish some senior home and to take care of the elderly. So the Taiwan Lizang Temple uh, would like to 
to uh, organize one to take care of the elderly because old age and sicknesses are often together. They all go hand in hand. It would be strange to be old without any sicknesses. So therefore, we say health and longevity. That's a nice greeting. Wish you health and longevity. But it is extremely difficult to have both. Generally speaking, the older you get, the more sickness you have. And the suffering due to sicknesses, in my opinion, is the hardest. It's the hardest. And tonight we practice Medicine Buddha. There are 84,000 different kinds of illnesses for human beings. You see someone who seems well, like the Dharma brother Wang Zhe, who just passed away. They're all very good people, and his wife are all very good people. He came to Seattle Lichang Temple not even a year ago, and now he's gone. They were healthy and fine. They came for a spiritual consultation. And then now he le has left already. You know, all of a sudden, he felt stomach problems, so he had it checked and diagnosed with the stomach cancer, and it's the the last stage, the most critical stage, and then it spread to the lungs. And he had problem with breathing, and he had to use oxygen. Without the oxygen, uh, the help that he he cannot live without the oxygen aid, and then he left very. Fast. So, especially with cancer, it's quite troublesome. That's why I feel that old age and sicknesses uh, go hand in hand. But of course, there are also young people who suffer greatly when they get cancer, especially with chemotherapy, and not necessarily cure. Sometimes they have metathesis. And as for myself, so far so good, but as for the future, Golden Mother said, 79, I know too, however, just let it be natural. Amitabha Buddha has said that he would extend my lifespan. Of course, that's good. But with the lifespan extension, I have to be healthy. 
They should be helped with longevity. Because without health, it would be a burden to people. It would be a burden to the uh, descendants and disciples and many people. That's not something that I wish for. Because I don't want to be a burden to other people. Thank you for your kind words. Okay, that's all. Because it's difficult to say. So, so far so good, and that's good enough. There's no need to be worried. You should not worry about my bis my business. You should not mind my business. Sakyamuni Buddha left the world at 80. And this is a folk custom in Taiwan. We never say, never say 79. We always skip and say 80. Why? Because 9 is bad. So next year, so this year is the year of the tiger, and next year is the year of the rabbit. And my zodiac is rooster, so that would be a, a direct conflict in terms of the planetaries. So people never celebrate their 79th birthday. They would count it as 80. That's Taiwanese belief. 79 is the worst year. Grandmaster is always 18. That's good. All my life, I don't have much health problem. Or much problems. <laughs> Sometimes I visualize the white bones, or sometimes I do the white bone visualization. It did not succeed. Instead, there's the white skin visualization. That's my little problem. Although I have written all these books to encourage other people, but sometimes, like last night, before sleep, Simo opened her eyes and saw a beautiful uh, celestial maiden. She saw it. Really. And then I uh, took a look, and it turned out to be the Sri Devi, a beautiful celestial maiden. So sometimes I'm also tempted by the, by the celestial maiden. Don't say that I'm a high adept that's totally unmoved. Of course, when I see old ladies, I'm totally unmoved. But the beautiful, young, celestial ladies, that would be a different thing. So therefore, spiritual cultivation is really not easy. Okay, that's that's all for chit chat. Let me share a joke.
Ming told his dad, Dad, I was punished by my teacher today. And dad asked, Why? And Ming replied, In class, the teacher asked me, What is three times two? And dad asked me, So what did you answer? I said six. And dad said, That's right. Why did the, uh, the teacher punish you? And Ming said, and then the teacher asked me again, how about two times three? And Dad hey. shouted, hey, isn't that the same? What the heck? So Dad was mad. He used that curse word. That four-letter word. Isn't it the same? Ming said, that's exactly what I said to the teacher. <laughs> of course, he was punished. Just, just have a good laugh. My friend May told me that when he when she attended a uh, Oral, oral examination for the master degree was being asked what is the difference between a law and statute. Yeah, this is play of words in Chinese. Yeah, because it's like teach, yeah, it's only meaningful in Chinese. <laughs> now, let's get to the question and answer. A question by Lin Hua Li Hong from Malaysia. Huh? On June 27, 2015, during the White Lotus King ceremony, Grandmaster chanted, So the first half of the mantra is that of Mahapratisara Bodhisattva. So does it mean that Mahapratisara Bodhisattva is the origin of the White Lotus King? And what is the merit generated from chanting this mantra? Om Mahapratisara Sangpala Pema Soha Om that's the mantra. Mm-hmm. So the first half of the mantra 
uh, represents the White Lotus King, and White Lotus King is also Padma Kumara. Why do we add Shambhala? Because he was the second king, and the first king was Manjushri Bodhisattva. Manjushri Bodhisattva was the first king of the Shambhala kingdom, and the second king was the White Lotus King. And White Lotus King is Padma Kumara. And Om Guru Lien Sang Siti Hom is the mantra of Padma Kumara, or the Lotus Youth. And Padma means Lotus. So the Lotus of the Shambhala Kingdom. Om Mahapradi Sado Jusso Sui Chu Pusa Om Mahapradi Sado Pusa is a Guan Sim Pusa is actually another epithet for Avalokiteswara Bodhisattva. And the origin of Avalokiteswara Bodhisattva is Amitabha Buddha. So Mahapratisara belongs to the, uh, the system of Avalokiteswara Bodhisattva. So strictly speaking, Amitabha Buddha, Avalokiteswara Bodhisattva, and Mahapratisara is also Avalokiteswara. So Amitabha, Mahapratisara, White Lotus King, Padma Kumara. That's the lineage. And they are all named mantra. So is Mahapratisara the origin of White Lotus King? Actually, it's Amitabha Buddha. So all Padma Kumaras are ma manifested by Amitabha Buddha. And our look at this Vara Bodhisattva and Mahasthama Prata Bodhisattva always follow Amitabha Buddha. So the origin of our look at this Vara or Kuan Yin Bodhisattvas is Amitabha Buddha. Therefore, we can say that the origin of the White Lotus King is Amitabha Buddha. Now, do you understand? So, Amitabha Buddha, Mahapratisara, White Lotus King, Padma Kumara, and the mantra includes all of them because the head of the Lotus Divisions is Amitabha Buddha. So what is the merits of this mantra? This mantra includes Amitabha Buddha, Mahapratisara, uh, White Lotus King, and Padma Kumara. So is the merit great? Of course it's great. And the second question, in Tantrayana, we use the three whites and three sweets. And the three whites are typically milk, cheese, and butter. And the three sweets are rock sugar, cane sugar, and honey. But in Today's world, we also have white sugar, sucrose, rock sugar, monk fruit sugar, and for the white ones, they are yogurt, uh, uh, and so this is a, a very detailed question. So the three whites 
牛奶，就是指牛奶。Refer to milk. 跟乳酪。Uh, cheese, butter. Three different whites. And the three sweets are the rock sugar, um, cane sugar, and honey. Or you can add. 那白色的贡品有三种 sugar, sucrose, 软，软软奶糖等。And for the white ones, 是不是按照仪轨，还是说，反正三种甜的东西跟三种白色的贡品？ Or、milk candies. 我要问一下哈，问一下才知道。Shouldn't we just follow the procedure? Because you're talking about. 就是这样子。If the practice procedure is as such, is it okay to just use any white things? Or three kinds of sweets? The answer. The answer is some can be replaced and some cannot. I don't know what that means. That's the answer. Why don't you just follow? Follow the instruction. Don't just create things on your own. Ah. 三白 ，three white，milk， 那个 cheese，cheese， 跟这个酥油 ，and butter， 三甜，就是冰糖 ，and three sweets are rock sugar，cane sugar and honey，just follow it，that will be fine。问说 ，don't ask too many replacement。那牛奶糖。Milk sugar. Okay. 好了，今天跟大家讲这个《金刚经》啊。Okay. 一体同观分第十八。Now, I will continue to talk about the Vajra Sutra. 如来有若眼不。Chapter 18, the one and same notion for everything. Subhuti, what do you think? Does the Tathagata have physical eyes? Yes, Lord Honored One. The Tathagata has physical eyes. Subhuti, what do you think? Does the Tathagata have celestial eyes? Yes, Lord Honored One. The Tathagata has celestial eyes. Subhuti, what do you think? Does the Tathagata have wisdom eyes? Yes, Lord Honored One. The Tathagata has wisdom eyes. Subhuti, what do you think? Does the Tathagata have dharma? Eyes. Yes, Lord Honored One, the Tathagata has Dhamma eyes. Subhuti, what do you think? Does the Tathagata have Buddha eyes? Yes, Lord Honored One, the Tathagata has Buddha eyes. Okay, that's all we'll cover tonight. <coughs> We're talking about the five kinds of eyes. And before talking about these five eyes, let me tell you first. Although we have learned about the Dharma of no self, as stated in the Vajrasutra, in order to attain the ultimate Dharma, you have to have no self. You must have no self. Now you know that in order to reach the ultimate, there should be no self. So once you have mastered no self, why do you still need the eyes? It's not stated in the Vajrasutra. 
but I have talked about it to everybody. So the words of uh, examining is very important. We have the Guanzhou uh, Lizhang Temple. Where is it? It's at the New Jersey State, the state of New Jersey, which is next to New York. So this word, scrutinize or examine, is very important. Although you have learned the Dharma of no self, you still need to observe or examine. And by examining, and because we have examination, we need the five eyes. So if you don't examine anything, you don't observe anything, because there's no self, what should I observe? However, the observation and examination is still there. Like for people in the Saha world, they are still there. What is observation and examination? Like I said, is to correct your own conduct and thoughts. You need observation and examination for them. What is spiritual cultivation is to correct your own conduct and thoughts. If you say, oh, I have now learned the Dharma of no self, I just uh, lay laying around, no eating, no drinking, and no peeing, and no pooping. Of course, if you don't eat and drink, then you don't need to go to the bathroom. You can just be like a dead person, don't do anything, no self, right? You're just waiting for your death. But your karma is there. All the things that you have done, the retribution is still there. So that's why in our spiritual cultivation, we have to observe and examine. We cannot live without them. And what, you, what should we observe is our own conduct. Do we create karma? We need to observe our thoughts. Do we create karma? And this is called spiritual cultivation. Otherwise, it's not there. We're just waiting for death. That's right. Someone asked me, Fair Master, what are you doing in the Saha world, waiting for death? Because everything is unattainable, so what am I doing? What should I have done? Just waiting for death, right? However, you cannot be like that. You should still examine your own conduct, because you still have conduct and behavior, and you still have thoughts too. If you just lay around, but you have all sorts of thoughts, what use is that? That's not spiritual cultivation. So that's why examination and observation are very important. Look at Amitabha Buddha, that's the wisdom of marvelous observation. And what is the wisdom of marvelous observation? That's this examination. One of the five wisdoms of the Tathagatas is the wisdom of marvelous observation. So you need to observe your own conducts, your own actions and thoughts and correct them, and that's spiritual cultivation. You cannot have any running thoughts or improper thoughts. You can only have the correct thoughts. And you cannot uh, have uh, in, incorrect or improper conduct or action. You can only have the correct, correct ones. So let me continue to explain. What do you use to observe and examine? Using your eyes and your own thoughts. So you use your mind to observe your thoughts or to observe your 
Sakyamuni Buddha asu buddhi. Does the Tathagata have physical eyes? Yes. The answers are all yes. What are the physical eyes for? All sentient beings have physical eyes. What do we see? To see everything. To actually to observe from facial expressions and body language too. So the Buddha asked again, Subhuti, does Tathagata have celestial eyes? Yes. So on the third eyes, so you can see beyond the physical eyes, you can see the 3,000 great thousand worlds, like last night. Uh, Simu saw a uh, Sri Devi in front of her, and she saw it and told me before her sleep. Typically, she sees many ghosts, but last night she saw a celestial maiden. Typically at night, as I walk back to my bedroom, I would chant the first one, Namo Siddhikarabha Bodhisattva. The second one would be the Sri Devi. And she saw Sri Devi last night. So what kind of eye is that? Things that other people don't see. But the celestial eyes can see the 3,000 great thousand worlds. That's the realm of the celestial eyes. Next one, does the Tathagata have wisdom eyes? Yes, what on the one, the Tathagata has wisdom eyes. So Subhuti replied, yes, five times. What is the wisdom eye for? It can see your own mind. So the wisdom eyes is to look inward, not outwardly. The wisdom eyes are to observe yourself, your own thoughts. And lastly, you would be able to see your own Buddha nature. That's the wisdom eyes. Don't get it wrong. Wisdom eyes are not to look outward, but to look inwardly, not outwardly. And to see what? To see your own thoughts, to see your own actions, to see your inside that when in your spiritual cultivation until you gen you can see the Buddha nature. Next, the Tathagata have the Dharma eyes, and Subhuti replied, yes, the Tathagata has Dharma eyes. What are the Dharma eyes? Do you generate bodhicitta? Do you want to widely deliver sentient beings? Only when you have Dharma eyes, you can deliver widely deliver sentient beings. That you comprehend the Buddha Dharma of Mahayana, both Hinayana and Mahayana traditions. And you understand the first and foremost Dharma. And what is the first and foremost Dharma? Is the unconditioned Dharma. Is the most supreme, the highest karma. The Dharma of no self. That's the utmost Dharma. Only when you have the Dharma eyes that you can use the first ultimate dharma to awaken others. And those who comprehend the first and foremost dharma 
is endowed with the Dharma eyes. Otherwise, you would not understand. Now, after Grand Master's explanation, you would understand. The first and foremost Dharma is the non-phenomena of self, other sentient beings, and lifespan. What is the phenomena of sentient beings? Isn't it the same as the non-phenomena of others or people? Are they, aren't they the same? Sentient beings represent the whole spatial dimension. And the phenomena of lifespan that represents time. So I want to clarify, we want to break through spatial and time dimension. Only then, that would be the real no-self. So you can see Buddha nature, because the Buddha nature uh, already breaks through the spatial and time dimension. That's the Dharma eyes. And the next question, does the Tathagata have Buddha eyes? Yes, the Tathagata has Buddha eyes. What are Buddha eyes? Not only that they can see the four sagely realms, they can see the four sagely realms above and below. They can see the hells, hungry ghosts, animals, and all ten Dharma realms, including the minds of human beings. They would be very clear about any mind arising in anybody. They can see clearly. So these are the five kinds of eyes, the five eyes. You need to be clear about them. What is the physical eye? If you see all sorts of forms and appearances in the world, in the Saha world, and the celestial eye is to see the th everything in the 3,000 great thousand worlds. And what is a Dharma eye? is that you would be able to comprehend the first and foremost, the ultimate Dharma. If you comprehend it, then you have the Dharma eye. What is the wisdom eye? Is that you can observe your own actions, conducts, actions, and also the, the emergence of your own Buddha nature. You would know. And what is the Buddha eye? is that you would be able to see the four sixthly realms as well as the, the six lower realms, all the ten Dharma realms, the three lower realms, as well as the 18 layers of hells and the minds of all sentient beings. You can see them all very clearly. So, Today, that's what we talk about, the five kinds of eyes. So, a tathagata has these five kinds of eyes in order to be perfect. Let me give an example. Also last night, or two nights ago, all of a sudden, I went to a place. And I visited a disciple. I didn't take a peek. I just, just be natural. That uh, my soul traveled as places, as, and went to a place I saw a disciple. And I <laughs> encountered her secret. Oh, 
Oh, it turned out just like that. I couldn't have been able to tell. I didn't do it intentionally. I saw her secret. Afterwards, I came back and I woke up in the morning and thought, it turns out that's how she is. <laughs> oh, because of that, that's why she's like this. Now I understand. So now I know her secret, but I cannot tell. I cannot say the secret either publicly or privately. Cannot say anything. So what use is knowing it? Just to let Grandmaster know that she thinks that way. And she's doing something very secretive. But she uh, intentionally schemed not to let anybody know. And she had lots of schemes when she was doing that, like this and that and this and that, so that people believe her. But I discovered her secret, her or his secret. Uh, I, it shouldn't be known, but I knew it inadvertently, and I cannot tell. So this is what I'm saying. I can tell the mind of sentient beings, although on the surface, he or she look a certain way, but actually, the Tathagata would know the real thing, so that whatever Whatever they're thinking or feeling or doing, you would know very clearly. It's like that joke, and Ming told his dad, Dad, I know your secret. But actually Ming did not know. But he just said it, I know your secret. And dad said, I'll give you 500 US dollars, that's a lot. Just shut up, okay? I'll give you five hundred dollars. And Ming thought, ooh, it's so easy to earn five hundred bucks. So he told mom too. Mom, I know your secret. And mom gave him a thousand US dollars. Don't don't say, okay? Don't say anything. And then the postman came, and Ming thought, wow, this is a good way. And, hey, Mr. Postman, I know your secret. And the postman cried and said, oh, now you know I'm your dad. No money. He just hugged Ming. And Ming was like, what is going on? So there are lots of secrets that you cannot tell. Yesterday, I got off work, I passed by the park and saw two elderly men who was playing chess. So I stopped and took a look, and 
It's been 30 minutes. And wow, the elderly are more experienced and they are like guarding for so long. And finally, one of them said, whose turn is it? And the other one said, I don't know. So both are forgetful. On the beach, if you encounter a young girl, it would erase the waves in my heart. And then, if I encounter a, a, a mature girl, then that would create waves in my heart. But if I see an old lady, I would shave my hair and become a monk. What he wished for is, is to encounter a bikini and not bikini. <laughs> so he wished for bikini, not bikini. Uh, this is talking about Ukraine and Russia. The president of Ukraine is waiting for the American president to help him. And he forgot, I just play a full of Chinese, that his name is Biden. Biden in Chinese is like waiting for nothing. And he's waiting for the Russian president to stop. But his name is Putin. And in Chinese it's like never stop. It's play of words of Chinese homophones. Putin, Putin. Putin That's all for today on Money Bang Home.